So the third practicing technique that I use, you know, again, just another way of seeing things, is I play a piece of music, it is actually very simple, and I just sing it along. Okay? It's very simple, people take it a lot for granted, but it really works, it makes you more musical. So if I have this piece here, so I would sing. soft if I didn't sing it. Or if I guessed, I would be very academic, very like, I know the steps. This note is soft because the chord is this and it comes from that chord, but that's not art. That's the science. We want to be arts, art, uh, artists as well, not only playing notes perfectly, you know? So you got to sing to, to see what comes naturally for you. And that's coming from what you were saying. How can you match the, the thing that you want to do is by singing, you can you give yourself the chance of knowing first of all what you want. Sometimes you don't know what you want. Sometimes you're like, I don't know how it's supposed to sound. Just sing it, give it a try. It doesn't need to be in tune, it doesn't need to be back in ink, just sing as you, as you were talking. So this way I made the first note louder. And the last a little loud. And then I replicate here. For example, here. If I never, if I hadn't seen that, seen that, I would never come out. With this. We play everything flat. And then you don't sing, you just play. to actually take responsibility for that. By singing, you allow this to happen unconsciously. You're not thinking about, you know, this note is strong, this one is weak, this is in the middle. You know, it's crazy that. You're not walking like a robot. <laughs> you just be who you are. And your experience, everything that you hear, is going to be translated, it's natural. Just by singing. Something to think about. Questions, guys, about these three ideas. Yes, I have something to maybe add. Like maybe uh, like sometimes when I play, I like try not to think about it too much, just to like enjoy it more. Just to kind of have my hands do the work, my hands and like just my own personal feeling put it in, put into it. Great. Um, now, sometimes I overthink it and I get tired. Yeah. <laughs> One thing is, is important to notice is that it is not possible to not think about something. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> you know, it is possible to, to change what you're thinking. For example, if I say to you, don't think about a pink elephant right now. <laughs> you're gonna, you immediately saw the pink elephants in your head. 
you know, like I said, don't, don't do it. You know, so our brain doesn't take things in the negative. It always takes in the positive. That's why we gotta focus on improvements, not on why it sucks and stuff like that. That's another reason for that. But in that case, just change the way you're thinking. You can use questions. You can also use another thing. You can add one more. You can use one more. So this will be number four. Put number four on this. <laughs> so we're talking about this, so I'll add one more. What I like to do sometimes is use the uh, words. Actually, three three words. It's called act as if. So I'm going to write this down. Act as if. It's not questions. It's not a learning game. This is not singing. This is act as if. So maybe today's practice, I'm going to act as if I could play this easily. Or act as if I was being paid $1,000 to play this. And I just had no chance. How are you going to play this? <laughs> what kind of pressure are you going to feel? Is that pressure going to be similar to what you are performing in public? You bet. So that's how you practice performing public too. Besides also doing demonstrations, you can do all sorts of stuff, you know, like simulations. That's what I meant. You can perform the, the entire concert by your own, you know, bow, uh, bounce, is that how you say it? Bow. Bow, yes, bow. Like this, you can do this. Act as if I was playing a concert. You use act as if, right? You talk about your pieces. Uh, thank you everybody for coming here today, tonight, and going to play this and this piece. But in order for this to work, you really got to use a very powerful tool called imagination. If you don't use your imagination, it's not going to work. Einstein once said that imagination is, much, is more important than knowledge. It's more important than knowledge, guys. So, and he was right. right? Look at all the things he accomplished and he, all the contributions he gave to the scientific world. So, by using my imagination, I can have to really vividly imagine that. There are people there. Even if there is no buy, there is people. There are people. So if I don't mistake, I'm not going to be, okay, I'll try that again. There are people watching. Are you see this? We'll try that again. <laughs> you know? So you, you really leave, you play a role in that situation. And who cares? Nobody's there. Everybody's just you. Everybody's going to call you crazy. Right? So, <laughs> so, Yes. <coughs> Two questions. Uh, you were telling me you were right that you can not think about something. So during uh, a real uh, performance or recital, do you have some uh, specific lines of thought that you use while you were playing? Like, I'm, I'm going to think about my tone, I'm going to think about this during this piece or that piece or the whole recital. Okay, so we are talking about public performances. Yeah. This is a whole new topic. It's a, a different thing. I don't use these things for performance. This is just for practicing. Right. Performance, I use other things. And I generally do my homework before, mm -hmm. in the sense that I, I control, not control, but I influence what I am. I focus more on what I'm feeling, instead of how mm -hmm. what things are. So, by the way, let, let me just say to you that all of this, I will continue answering, but just before I forget you, all the information that I'm sharing you, this is just a little bit of what I have available on my website. I do like, a, I, I created an online course, a 30 day program called Pathways to Guitar Excellence. And you may ask me, why Pathways to Guitar Excellence? Because it had to have a name. Okay, so <laughs> just call it that way. So, and it's a series of step-by-step -step things that you can do, including this conversation we had is, is one of the, the things. That we, I maybe talk about that in one of the days. There are 30 of those days. There is a lot of information. Everything that I know about music, about technique, about guitar is there. It, could, it took me like two years and a half of my life to design it. And so you're gonna find a virtual online book. If you wanna read, you can read the material. You're also going to find these slides. I was going to show you a little bit of this for your projector. And, but it's not working. But you can access in my website if there are some demos there. So there are some slides with, uh, with my voice guides, you know, step by step, like a personal coach. You 
know, like a personal trainer for guitarists. And there are also videos. So I, I show on the guitar how I do certain things, especially when I talk about guitar technique, because I have a different way of thinking about technique as well. So if you're interested in, in learning more about this material, you can check my website. This is guitarimpacts.com. Very streamlined. And I invite everybody to get one of my CDs in the box. This is like a, a free stuff that I'm giving every single one of you. Hope you can get some value from that. And so continue to answer your question. Talking about public performances, I focus on what I'm feeling before. So because what, let's ask ourselves. Why do people go to concerts? Have you ever, ever asked yourself this question? Why do people go to concerts? To enjoy the music. To what? Enjoy the music. Enjoy. Great. I like that word. That word. Enjoy. To enjoy the music. And what else? In person. To learn. To learn. Okay. To be to learn. Inspired. To, to feel inspired. Right. So everything that we are talking, we're not gonna, we don't have time to be, keep asking, but it boils down that people want to go to concert because they want to feel something. They are not there because they want to intellectually understand how it works. If they go there trying to intellectually understand how it works, that gives them what? A good feeling. They feel like, I'm smart, so I can figure out why. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, it boils down to feelings. People want to have an experience. That's it. And so, and, and, you know, and most people don't know this. They, they're not conscious. Everybody knows, but they're not conscious of this stuff. So, what I do, there, the, there is a rule. So, you, you, okay, so let's come back a little bit. So, your job as a guitarist, as a musician, is to go there and influence the audience to feel something. That's our job with our music. Of course, the music is the is we are the vehicle for the music. The music is the main music does it by itself. You know? But uh, so we want to people want to feel. Uh, what I was going to say. So are, <laughs> yes. So there is a rule. If you want to influence another human being, because you can't control what people feel or not. It's not up to us. Everybody has the, the free will. Everybody wants they, they have the, the choice to choose what they feel. About. But you can you can increase the probability of they feeling very good with their concerts if you feel it yourself. You can't influence another person to feel something if you're not feeling it yourself. You can't increase the probabilities of them liking if you're not feeling it yourself. You gotta. Go through the way first. You gotta lead by example. So if I, uh, if my goal is to have like the audience needs to get out of this concert feeling, you know, passionate about this music, I have to feel passionate first. When I'm playing, I have to really. But I cannot, I cannot like pretend I'm feeling. I cannot act like. No, <laughs> it cannot be fake. You know, it has to be genuine. <clears throat> and that's the confusion people make. If it's not genuine, it's not going to work. It's too genuine. So again, you may use a question as well for this beforehand. It's like, how can I genuinely feel what I want to feel in this piece of music? How can I genuinely feel? Immediately, you're like, you're open to the idea. You may not know how, but you're open. How can I genuinely feel? And you keep repeating the question. If you don't know the answer, keep repeating. How can I genuinely feel that right now? How can I genuinely? How can I genuinely? Then you get there by repeating over and over again the question. And once you are in that place where you have something to offer to the audience, because our job is to give to the audience. And we can't not give what we don't have. That's why we get a feel first. So we feel and we give. And if we give, the audience claps, you know, for us. And what do we do with that? There are people who are like, right, feel good. And then they fail, <laughs> they, they, they go down. So what, we just give it back to them. I don't need that. 
genuinely, you gotta be genuine. It's like, I don't need. And you give this back to them, and you make this, let's call this like a admiration thing to the audience. And this creates like a circle, you know? They give to you, you give to them. And this is where charisma comes from. It's you get all this energy and give it back to them. What I really like was, was what you did on Wednesday, you know, because you went through these different stages, all the emotion, they started out very serious, and then we went a bit to Bering Bao with Gabrielle, it was yes. a little more upbeat, and then it ended up in an experimental piece, and the whole audience was kind of following along. In the end, I thought everybody was, was really upbeat and humorous, so everybody came along, because I think it was genuine, like you said. Exactly. That was a good progression, I thought. Of, of your performance because it didn't stay at the same emotional level. It took the audience kind of for a ride. You know? yeah, and I like what you said because that's another reason that some people think they think about you no know, again I'm gonna have just one emotion. Not one. You have to have a bunch of those. What do people want? So of course you want to give them pleasurable emotions. Sometimes you may give them something that's generally sad. If the piece is really sad you must feel sad. <laughs> we are performers, guys, right? We are not just finger moving machines, right? So that's the artistic part. So if it's fingers, you work on fingers, learning game and stuff like that. But if it's not, use your resources. That's why I say your resources are much more important than any trick you learn. Because this will give, everybody has a different way of showing other people that they feel passionate or, or you know, that they admire someone. Some people may just have like they, they they may not smile that much, but they, they f you feel that their 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 uh, their face feels like you know there is something there. Other people they just smile all the time. It's natural for them. Other people they they move their body all the time like this, you know, <laughs> and they do like other people are more outgoing that way. So that's why I'm saying if you have the resources, you just be yourself. And the resources are going to flow through your body. Now, we're getting to the end of this. I would like to thank you again for, for being here. And if you, we can keep going if you want to keep adding things, you know, asking questions. But, uh, and, but I also understand there are people who need to leave if you need to leave. We have a concert coming up at 6, if I'm not mistaken. 7. 7. Seven. 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 Yeah. Great. What time is it? 10 after 5. Oh, great. Okay, so we have some time if you guys want to stay. Um, <coughs> I, I find that sometimes I find it hard. Like, I have, say, four pieces I want to practice. Um, should I, or I have one piece I want to practice. Should I practice, like, one piece for three hours, or should I just take only a section at a time, because I mean sometimes I will practice a piece for like three four hours one night, and then the next day I'm like kind of burnt out, but I still have to practice it because there's still a lot I need to get to it. But then there's like I get so mixed up because I have so many pieces that I need to practice. I so see. What's, what's like the recommendation? On that? Well, I'm gonna use your analogy because uh, you're about to be there as well. I work in the gym. It's great, you know, it's like a person has high standards for their body. And what, what, we gonna, what do you guys do a lot? You do a lot of condition, repetition, right? You work in your biceps, you have a series of sets that you do regularly. And if you miss a day or two, if it, for one year it doesn't make a difference, but if you keep missing all the time, you're not gonna get to the, 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 the standard you want. So it's the same with the guitar. So there is a way of systematically organizing why you're going to practice every day and making like a table of things that you do. And there is a way of doing this that is not boring. 